Vasquez on the outside, the attack. Blocked back and down by the Broncos. Here's the set, Beardsley outside. Suha with the kill. Erickson going to set it up for Axman. That's going to be off the hand of Carson Nickel and the Doan College Tigers are the volleyball champions of the Great Plains Athletic Conference. When the number five Hastings Broncos fell in the GPAC championship game, it knew its ranking would drop. Nobody knew quite how far, but if it was too far, the team would have to host a first round national tournament game. The team only fell to number eight, and by NAIA rules, it would have a first round bye in the national tournament. With this, the team would go without playing from November 10th until November 27th. The first pool play match for the Broncos was against Mid-America Nazarene and nearly ended in a sweep. The Broncos would make a furious comeback but would give up the lead in the fifth set and fall. The next night, the team played Coach Matt Buttermore's previous school, the Bellevue University Bruins. The Broncos had no problem handling the Bruins, winning that one in straight sets. The final night of pool play was an important one. Hastings College was bringing a busload of students to watch the final pool play match against Embry-Riddle. With a win, Hastings would move on to the next round, but with a loss, there would be a tie for second place. Embry-Riddle came out on fire and swept the Broncos in just about an hour. The real Embry kind of showed up that day and we weren't ready for him, so um, thankfully we did have the, the tiebreaker to fall back on if we lost that game. So, um, But yeah, it was... We just didn't execute very well that match. And I don't, don't know if we didn't have enough energy or what the deal was, but uh, we just couldn't get anything going that match. I think we came out really flat too, not a whole lot of energy. This was our third game of the week and we were just, you know, a little, a little tired by that point. The tiebreakers have been determined and what we will have here is we will have about a 45 minute break and it will be Bellevue and Hastings playing a one set match to 25 Embry-Riddle has the highest percentage of the three tied teams and they will sit and wait and play the winner of that one following the Hastings and Bellevue match. We were confident the whole time against the Bellevue tiebreaker because the night before we had taken it to Bellevue. We knew we could beat them. We were just ready to come out and beat them again. And I don't think even when it was 24-24 is what it was tied at, I don't think any of us ever doubted for a second we were going to beat them. It was just a matter of getting those last couple points. I think the, the next one kind of overshadows that one so much it's hard to really remember how tense it was getting. But um. Welcome back once again for a third time tonight to the Tyson Event Center Gateway Arena in Sioux City and the 33rd Annual NAIA National Volleyball Championship. We are now going to determine who the second team will be out of Pool E as the Broncos of Hastings College and the Embry-Riddle Eagles will square off in one set to 25. These two teams just played a few, uh, well, maybe about an hour ago, hour and a half ago, and it was a match won by Embry-Riddle in straight sets. Here's the serve by Holcomb. Kinney takes it. Beardsley outside set. Schween blocked back. Broncos can't get there, and it's going to go to the floor, and it's 24 to 19. And Embry Riddle has set match point here in the tiebreaker. Well, my parents even told me that they at one time doubted that we were going to win the game. My mom was actually crying when it was 24 19 that our season was over, and she was really sad. At this point, you're just kind of, you know, I guess a top 10 team, you don't come back from this. So it's, uh, you know, you want to keep playing hard, but uh, the odds are very slim or non-existent really at this point. Embry-Riddle 24, Hastings 19, set match point to the round of 12 tomorrow at the Tyson Event Center. We're going to see a sub for Hastings. Nichols going to quickly come back into the ball game and pass. Laura reminded me to sub uh, Nickel back in. Um, 
because, well, her thinking was, you know, it was Nichols' senior year, she needed to be on the court. And I had actually, in my scouting report, had that this, this server would miss serves if he subbed in the middle of her serve. 24 to 19, our score. And here we go. The serve, long and out of bounds, 24 to 20, Bronco serve. That one was huge because they had two jump top spin girls and they were they killed us all night with their top spin serve. You can go back and hit a good serve yourself after they miss a serve. Um, you really you're just you're I guess you're, you'd say you're capitalizing. You're really kind of turning the momentum there. If you go back and hit a, a weak serve and they're in system, it doesn't always help you. So service will be with Beardsley, and here she goes. Taken by Libero Gray, Vasquez on the outside, the attack. Blocked back and down by the Broncos. That's Osterhaus out there, along with Katie Zuha. If you have a big block, well placed every time, they're having to make a good decision. Every time they go up and swing, eventually they're going to make some errors. I think that's important because a block really gets in a hitter's head. I know, for me personally, when I get blocked, I'm not swinging quite as hard going up the next time because that's in your head is that, well, I just got blocked. I don't want to get blocked again and it kind of can just mess with the hitter's head. So I think especially as we're coming back on them, to get them a little bit down, a little bit more cautious is very important. Here's the serve, taken by Gray. Set, middle, the quick, cross court and out of bounds, no tip. That was probably their only, really only unforced error in that run, which uh, sometimes when you see a comeback like this, it's usually because one team makes a lot of errors. And that was probably really the only bad error they made in that run. I thought that was the end actually to be honest. Here's the serve again for Haley Beardsley. Gray, nobody's there to pay. get it. The setter does finally come in. It's a free ball. Let's use it. Here's the set for Beardsley on the outside. Schween goes off the block for the kill. Kendra Schween with the big bang. On a good team you need a player that can go up and score a point in just about any situation. It's like a basketball team if you have a guy that can go or a girl that can go uh, you know, just create a shot in a clutch moment. Uh, you know, same thing in volleyball. If you have a hitter that can score from front row, back row, either side of the net, uh, on a ball that maybe you didn't pass very well, um, it just makes you really, really tough to beat because you're always, you're always a threat to score a point regardless of what's going on on the court. I actually think I played terrible in the tournament. I was disappointed in myself. I feel like I played very, very well all season long, and then I don't feel like I lived up to my expectations during the tournament. Broncos continue to serve Haley Beardsley. It could have been her last serve as a college player, you know, right here. So, um, you know, I'm sure she had a lot of nerves. I'm sure she was thinking, just get it in, which is kind of what she does every time she serves. So <laughs> it's not a big change. Especially that game, what Haley said was that we were not going to end our season on her missed serve. And that was what she was saying to herself back there as she's serving the ball is that she's not going to end our season and that ball's going in the court. Serve taken by Gray. Here's the set, step middle. Broncos got it. Beardsley outside, off the tip, dug by Embry Riddle. Back row attack. They punch it, pushed back by Osterhaus. Resetting are the Eagles. Blocked back again by the Broncos to tie it up at 24 all. 24 to 24, and we got ourselves a brand new ball game, folks. When you look at them both, they're both six feet tall with long arms. It puts up a pretty big block in front of the hitter on the other side. It was, a, it was actually a pretty good uh, rotation for us to be in at this point. That's actually our strongest front ro rotation uh, with those two up uh, defensively, especially. Uh, we don't have Shana hitting, but we do have Jess blocking at that point. So, And then we have Kendra up there hitting as well. So it's a good rotation for us. 24 to 24, Hastings and Embry-Riddle. The fans are on their feet. Here we go. Serve taken by Embry Riddle. Up to the net. Dump taken by Kenny. Here's the set. Beardsley outside. Zuha with the kill. And the Broncos have set point at 25 to 24. It was super exciting, just in general. Lots of adrenaline flow in that whole time. We just took the lead. Everyone's really excited that, as we've been saying the whole time, we can do this, we can do this. We're really doing this. You know, she was just uh, very consistent all year. Um, seems like sometimes she blocked. She could never block and hit well at the same time, but um, we always could count on her for some points, whether she was blocking well that match or, uh, or uh, hitting well that match. I think she did a great job coming in. She hadn't played very much as a freshman, so coming in, really playing her first year on the court as a sophomore, I think she did a great job just stepping up. She always seemed to get big kills when we needed them from her. 
25 to 24, set point Hastings. Serve taken by Embry Riddle, set left side, the attack off the block, back to Embry Riddle. They're gonna reset, outside they go, cross court dug by Kenny. Here's Schween, push it to the back row, the attack off the tape. I think my heart just dropped when it hit the tape because I didn't think it was gonna make it over. I want a nickel to hit that ball. You know, when you're aggressive, good things happen. Um, and <laughs> that's a really good thing to have happen right there. Here's Schween, push it to the back row, the attack off the tape, and it's gonna go to the ground. Was it in? Did he call it in? Yes, he called it in, and the Broncos have won it. We didn't know if it had hit or not because that girl dove for it, and it looked like she might have gotten it up. And so we weren't, we weren't about to lose because they got some lucky dig and played it over and we're all already cheering. Yeah, I, I decided, I don't know, from where I was, I thought, I, you know, I thought it was down for sure. So, um, although she did get closer than I thought she would. Once I, once I saw it hit the net and dribble, dribble, I thought for sure it was down. And I remember she snuck in there a little bit, but yeah, I, I, was, pretty, I was sure it was down. A couple of us were still going for the ball like oh heck no we're not going to lose the point on that and then they did call it down and that was a great feeling that we we made it oh my the broncos have won it they come from behind 24 to 18 hastings wins it 26 to 24 the broncos will play on friday can you believe it you know it's just you know it's a good moment you know i think in the moment, you know, you realize that this doesn't happen very often. So I was trying to just kind of appreciate it, and uh, you know, we kind of I don't say we got a gift, but we got we got something that doesn't happen very often. So I think in that moment, I was trying to appreciate that. Well, Hastings fans, all I can say is wow. I've seen a lot of volleyball over the years, but you just do not see teams down seven very often, especially to the number five team in the country, and come back and win. But that's what just happened here in the second tiebreaker set in Pool E. The Broncos down seven, win it 26 to 24. It was just such a great feeling when that ball finally fell. We had all we had a lot of fans there, student section, parents, everybody, and to just win that game after being down by so much. The whole gym is just going crazy. It was just an amazing feeling. No one else had that in the whole tournament, so uh, that was very unique. We kind of made a name for ourselves that way as well. So, um, you know, I think that was, that was a pretty cool thing. And I was, you know, very thankful to President Trotter and Matt Fong and everybody else to kind of make it happen as well as the students that took the time to come up and not sleep a whole lot and, uh, and make the trip. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. We all know crazy things can happen in sport. There's no reason to ever give up. Um, and if you have a team that, that believes in its ability, that has good, good talent, uh, you know, some <laughs> crazy things like this can happen. Was it in? Did he call it in? Yes, he called it in, and the Broncos have won it! I think that means just a lot for our season. We, my whole four years at Hastings in general, um, we have been through the four coaches. And I would have to say at times I've wanted to quit. And I just keep thinking that I'm in it for the love of the game. Here's the set for Beardsley on the outside. Schween goes off the block for the kill. Kendra Schween with the big bang. One word. Incredible. Take a moment to think of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the first word that came to my head, so I figured that was the one to go with. I don't, there's a lot of words to describe it, and that's, that's the first one that came out. The whole experience in general was just incredible. Um, I, think, I mean, fitting, I think, is, is apt. The Broncos' late night would not last long, as the team had to be back in action at 10 o'clock the next morning. The team would win a four-set match against Lee University, but in the quarterfinals will be swept by Concordia University from California, who would go on to win the championship. The Broncos' 2012 season was a memorable one, as the team had its best finish in recent memory by going 30-7. Five seniors finished their careers in this tournament, and in their careers they finished with a total record of 96-46. The sweetest memory from their career at Hastings? The trip to the national tournament.